Okay, we're getting back on the Sportster here. <clears throat> I have some issues i got to go over with this, but we'll start with the cylinders first. So this is the uh, stroker motor I was working on a few months ago that I never finished. The customer kind of wants me to get back on it and finish it get it to them, so I'm working on it. So we're in the middle of a hot summer day. So we work at late, 11 o'clock. It's a good time to hold the cylinder. It's cool down a little bit. So... Anyway, I just got done holding this here. You can see the cylinder finish I use is pretty smooth. This is going to be a real hot uh, hot rod street motor. It's going to run it hard. So we give a little extra clearances. These are the uh, S and S pistons here that we're going to use. So they got some new numbers they're using now. It looks like the same old piston, so Wisco piston looks like to me. So. They didn't really tell you what numbers to use on here because they don't list it. So this is the box number for uh, at least 30 overs, I think. Oh, these are standard 10 overs. Excuse me, 10 overs because these are brand new cylinders. So these are the pistons here that are for Sportster. But this part number here does not match the number in the box right there. But that's a Sportster piston. So they say right here you run three and a half to four and four and a half to five and a half if you're running hard. So I decided to go right in the middle, four and a quarter. So he's gonna run it pretty hard, so it's a good starting place. You break it in, it should be good. So I used a nice good cylinder finish in there. You can see where the brass part is in there, where we welded up the drain holes in there. So they're no longer in there. There's the other one. So we drill them here on the outside, so you can watch the previous videos to see what that all means. The red line is the outside of the case, so you can see how this one gets pretty thin. These other ones have more clearance to them. This one's thin here, less a little bit, but not like this one's the worst, which is our front hole. Front cylinder. All right, so I got these honed in already, you didn't need to watch me sweat doing that, so I didn't videotape it. So all I gotta do now is figure out which cylinder is which. I think the rear one's gonna be the big one. So we take the mic. That one goes in there. This does not fit. So this would be the small one. So the way you tell sports or cylinders apart are usually this is notched out for the exhaust system. And if you look at the valve release push rods are cut on the intakes because they're closer than the exhaust are. So this one here you can see how it's cut a little bit closer here but not in the base. This one here you can definitely see they cut the base out. That's not. So this is the rear. Now this one here was welded up at the, you know, when I got it. It came new out of the box but that's been welded obviously. So I was trying to figure out what the hell they did. You know, I didn't really care. Didn't hurt the cylinder or anything. But now it turns out it's probably going to be a problem. See how this is the exhaust clearance is cut in here? We have no exhaust clearance now. So we gotta see if the cylinder has a fit on there, which it probably won't. Okay, so we determined that the rear one is the big one. Yep, front small. So this is the big piston. This is the small piston. So that's why it's got an S on it and a B. Now S and S claims their, their machining is so good now, you don't have to measure their pistons anymore. <laughs> A joke. So there's half a thousand difference between these two, so that's right on the money for being dead nuts perfect, right? Half a thousand different. So this is our big one, our small one, I mean, which now we know is our rear, is our front hole. I'll get this figured out. Yeah. So we're going to mark this a big print front. Over here, I have small on the underside. We're going to put front right there also. The big one right here we're going to have is rear because it's a rear and we're going to mark it under here too so you have to wash it off in two spots to see it. So they're nice and loose because they're in that four and a half dial which means the break in means you rub it up a few times and go out and run the piss out of it. Almost. Probably should put it out five miles out before you get on too hard. But uh, you can definitely get on it pretty good. And that's what I'll take to break the rings in too with a real fine finish. They're not super fine, but they're pretty fine. So these motors take uh, 
buttons in here. These go on your wrist pin because the wrist pin goes through the oil ring, so you have to have a machine button in here. See the flat spot on the button. See that in the picture there or not. Whatever, it's in there. That has to go right in there like that. So that's why these are made that way. Alright, so we got this part handled. Wrap back up in the plastic because they're going to ship back to New York City. Or at least New York State. So now you know who these sellers are. In case you know, call me tomorrow. We'll talk. I'm sure you'll figure out who it is. Alright, I am marking the box which one's which. This is the front one. Stuff so everybody knows who's who. This would be called the front. Now if you pack your parts really good, you get them delivered good. When you pack them crappy, guess what happens? So we're probably showing you how to pack this stuff up really good. And we got another crappy video saying I'm picking on everybody about their shitty packing jobs. It really makes me feel bad when you leave negative comments. <laughs> yeah, right. Like I care. Okay, rear. Okay, so piston the cylinders are almost done. I gotta check this out. So, we're going to take our rear head, that would be the one with the exhaust in the back of the motor. And we're going to stick that on top of that brand new cylinder and see how great it fits. Okay, I line up the four uh, head bolt holes. Yeah, line up down in there. Maybe you can see. Hard to tell. Okay, so there's your exhaust spigot. So you have to have room for your pipe and your clamp. So you need a little bit of clearance there. See that? And you can see how most of that you don't care about. Okay, now over here we have a little issue. See that gap right there? See that lack of clearance right there? That is not going to work. Now I can take a big hammer and knock that fin off and probably take that one with it. Or I can just cut the damn thing back off because it ain't supposed to be there. My guess is somebody in uh, Taiwan didn't know what the hell they were doing. And they probably dropped a cylinder core and thought they broke it so they hit it in the boss and fixed it. Or their boss is a dumbass and didn't know any better. He fixed it too. Okay, so we know we need to cut it right to there. that helps to have a pin that actually works kind of works all right there's a mark there all right so see the push rod won't even fit under the cover maybe hit on that too okay so we have a mark right here and a mark right here so that much needs to come off for sure that I know. Bring this back up here. It looks like they're close. Come back and look at it. Looks good. Yep, 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 yep. And our mark right there. I can't see the camera down here. Gotta make sure you clear this part right here. All right, so it looks like that'll work. So that's going to be our minimum clearance that we need to deal with. Oop, we disappeared on the camera. So right through here. So to make it look kind of stock, we're going to make this look a little bit better than what they had. Okay, so we need to at least take that much off. 
But you can see how much they cut off. They cut off a bunch. So, okay, so I gotta determine how much of this I wanna cut off. I don't have a problem with taking a little extra, but we don't need to take a lot off. We gotta have some cooling. Okay, all of this needs to go away. Alright, so I'm gonna go grind that off and get rid of it. So to get off quickly, I'll probably take my chop, my slitting saw, chop saw, and I'll grind it right through here. Take this piece off to here, and I'll come back and cut it off this way, and then I'll cut it that way for the angle, and then I'll hand blend it. It probably won't look too bad. You can see where it looks like it's broken all the way back to here. Cause that's where they welded it. This is steel, this is cast, so they obviously welded it on there. Okay, so I gotta go work on that, finish it up, and then I gotta paint these. You know, this part would be done. Okay. One thing about freshly board cylinders, you should spray something on them, like this, to keep them from rusting. <clears throat> but meantime, if you cover up the hole, the air don't get in there, they don't rust easily. So they can sit like that for a long time. They won't rust. They won't get dirty either. Alright, so that's what we do on the cylinders. So there we go. Okay, now we're gonna move on to our heads. Alright, so as some of you might have noticed, I'm really behind on getting work done around here. Even though I actually have a clear bench right now. Look at that. And I even got I got a part of a hole right here. That's like a whole motor. <clears throat> But those stupid uh, M8 heads are still sitting here from months ago. Alright, so what I did was, over the summer I had another shop try to help me a little bit. And I gave them a few sets of heads to uh, play with and do some different things to them. And they were supposed to do a few things. So, sometimes they did more than they were supposed to do. In this case, they did more than they were supposed to do. I wanted to put the guides in there and fit the guides for me and let me do the rest. Well, they went ahead and did a full valve job on them. So, they don't do things quite the way I do it, so I'm not too happy about it. Uh, I need to work on these valves because they haven't been honed out here on the stem. They didn't be reground, they were just kind of back cut and lapped, it looks like, or at least lapped. So, I'm going to reground these. They're still brand new, they haven't really been worked on, so you can see how thick the margin is. They haven't had been ground. So I'm going to work on those. The guide fit feels all right, but I'm going to measure it to make sure. But I'm going to have to recut the, the seats and stuff to put them where I want them to be and make them the shape I want. Then I'm going to come back and do a little bit of cleanup on the ports. He thinks he wants to go faster, so we're going to go in here and do a little work in here and open things up a little bit and make it go a little bit faster. So these ports have been all worked over a lot. They're a little bumpy in here. You can't see it right now, but when I do the uh, cutting, you'll see it. So way down in here, there's a hole, and you got a big high spot, and then you back low again. So it's got like a big, big piece of big mountain right in the middle there, kind of or a valley. What are you doing? Or not a valley, but um, well, like a big sand dune or something in the middle. It's hard to describe it. Anyway, I'm gonna knock that out. It's okay right here, but it's not too good over here. So anyway, we'll show how to do that. Someone cut the guide boss away quite a bit. That's why you can see the machine part of the guide right there. Way down in there. That's not good. It's kind of part on the heads. This one here, they really got carried away. It looks like a branch job. That's how he used to do them. Junk. Guides come, uh, come loose and don't stay put. So, geez, look at this head here. And they left a huge hump in there, too. Why'd they do that? That's stupid. So they cut the guide away. See, there's no, almost nothing holding the guide in. Yet they left a huge hump right there because they ground the head all out. So what they did was they came in through here with a, with, without the guide in there. I always leave the guide in where I pour it. And they cut the damn port out so it looked kind of round, but when they went and put the damn guide back in there, they cut the whole boss away. So there's no support. And then they left a the big-ass hump over here that still you got to flow over a hump. So what the hell good is that? It would have been better if you left a rib like my finger right there, which would support the guide. It would separate the airflow so it went down both sides of the guide instead of only this side. And it would flow a lot better. The exhaust, kind of the same way. You see how it's constipated through here and it's wide open through here? Well, you don't need to make that any bigger. It's already too big. Actually, it wouldn't hurt to open this side up over here and let some air out. 
But uh, anyway, it's, people have their theories about how these things are supposed to be. Yeah, they do the same crap on this one. So anyway, these are not the best quality of heads, but they've had a lot of work done on them. They also got four spark plugs they put in there, in case you need to have an extra set of plugs with you. So, uh, debatable if that's any better. I didn't see any gain on my race bike. Who knows? Maybe on a street bike, you know, or something. All right, so anyway, I'm going to do a little bit of basic redo these a little bit. So we're going to see get a little bit of work done on tonight, and we'll see how far we get. All right, let me get the valves ready to go. Go over to do a little honing. We'll be back.